In this video, we're going to look at code refactoring. So I have an old version of the go to turn based RPG with the first version of Guillermo's quest system. I'm going to import it. And let's see, we're going to go in and import the project.godot. So this one was his first implementation of the system. And I want to show you a few issues when you break the single responsibility principle in object-oriented programming. So this principle is one of the simplest ones to follow and it helps you keep track of what things do. Uh, try to make everything in your game, every script, every node, do one thing and do it well and keep the code simple and consistent. Guillaume has made a quest system where you had the quest system node it acted as some kind of library of quests. So when you started a quest, it would add it as a child of itself. And then it would do a few other checks, like um, uh, it would process the quest when they were finished, would react to combat getting started in the game, could tell you if it had a quest, things like these, and reward the player. This is all fine. But one thing I want to show you is um, lately in OpenRPG was starting to add doc strings at the top to say this class does that. So for example, you could say this is a, quest, a database of quests. And this helps you limit the functionality of that class to not put too many methods, to not extend it too much. So this file in itself was not a problem, but a quest system touches different parts of the game, can have different interconnected parts if you want because you have the quest themselves that should have some objectives and that have to start, become active, inactive, be completed based on the objectives that you do. So we have that in the quest system and they are in quest.gd in this case. The first thing I want you to notice is how you have signals on the quest system to say this quest was finished, delivered, started, and on the quest itself you have the same quest finished, quest delivered, quest. The way the quests work in the game, uh, if you go to the map, so he made NPCs that would specifically give or complete a quest for the player. And so, if we look at these NPCs, I go to the test quest giver, which is here, and I go down to its actions, it would start a dialogue and then give the player a quest. This give quest action, if you look at it, it would also have a quest given signal to say, okay, the quest has been given to the player, so basically it got started, right? And when you start to have that, when you start to have signal duplication, it means there's a problem with the responsibility. There are multiple objects in the game that are responsible for telling the other systems that a quest got started. I've been working on refactoring that, so let me launch another instance of Godot and launch the current master version. All right. So now, first, the quest system is meant to be a bit simpler. I've removed some script, some code. All the NPCs in the game can have a quest, so they all have that quest bubble. Although this is not reflected on the map at the moment, if one of the quest uh, givers or any NPC basically has one of these give quest action or complete quest actions, and the same NPC can have both, then the quest bubble will appear in the game. So if I were to play the game now, this NPC here can give the player a quest. There's no dialogue, it's just the pure raw functionality that I replicated. So you press space and the quest starts. You can see the quest journal jiggled a little bit. So now we have the quest in our journal that is active. And we know that thanks to that little icon here that got grayed out. So we can complete the objectives and that second NPC would then show the interrogation mark. The big difference in here, if I open quest system, well, quest system still does a few things. Um, I think there's work to do to separate the data from the functionality, but it gives you an API to just start and finish the quest. And it's a quest database. So it's responsible for giving you the one quest object that's going to be updated in the game. In order to start a quest, you create these actions and you give it a quest reference. And that reference is the scene 
that contains your quest, the quest that's saved on the disk. The problem is this reference is not the quest object, the one quest object that's in the database. So it's just a reference. You just use it to find the real quest object. So the quest system is responsible for returning that quest. If I open the quest system scene, it has them under the available node. So you have a list of all the quests in the game, if you want, that the player can start at the moment. Then as they become active, they move to active and to completed and to delivered when they are completely finished. The way the system works, you can't redo the same quest multiple time. Once it's delivered, it's finished. Now, if I go back to the previous version, as you can see, you had three signals on quest system and you had signals on the give quest action and receive or complete quest action uh, objects as well. Now, you don't have that in the quest system, no signals. This responsibility has been entirely removed from the quest system. There's only one element that's going to tell how quests evolve in the game, and it's the quest themselves. The quest can be started, completed, delivered. It doesn't pass any information. The quest object just says, it, I started, I got completed, I got delivered. Now, the way you know which quest got started at what time is using bindings. I'm going to show you the quest journal, so the bit of interface that shows you the quest right now. The code is a little complex because we are using uh, the tree object in Godot. This is the same node that Godot uses to represent the node tree here, right? So there's a bit of complexity in using that one. What we're interested in really is that ready method here. The rest is not that important. So right now, the quest system is globally available in the game. It's a, an autoload or a singleton. Might not be the best thing to use, but we are doing that for now. And so the quest journal is going to loop through all the quests that are available in the game, and it connects to the quest object that it gets. Now it connects with three signals, so started, completed, delivered, and we use the last argument from the connect function to bind the quest to the call. So you could bind any object in there, but you can bind that quest object that doesn't give you itself whenever you receive the signal, uh, receive a message from the signal, but it makes it so when a quest starts, we know which quest started because the call to on quest started is going to bring quest along with it. So now if you look at the things I've refactored, the things I've changed, the quest system, the quest, uh, the quest, uh, if I go to, I think I added a doc string at the top of every class. And that's one tip for you as you create more complex games as they start to scale. I think it's interesting to have not documentation everywhere in the code because the code that you write should as much as possible document itself. And sometimes you want to add a comment to make a, some complex calculation, for example, where you don't have a workaround, you just put a little comment to say, this is what this calculation does, for instance. This is Python notation, by the way, but when you use three quotation marks like that, this indicates to Godot that this is a multi-line string, but it also works as a multi-line comment. It, you can just put a bit of information about what the responsibility of that object is. And if you start to say it does this and that and that, it has multiple responsibilities. So you are probably breaking the single responsibility principle and you are taking the risk of creating a class that does too many things, that's going to connect to too many systems in the game, and that's going to break at some point. And we've had that problem with the quest system. It would have been hard to create content for it, hard to add NPCs. Now it's less hard, let's say. Anyway, I'll leave you with Guilherme's tutorials moving forward. He's going to explain how the quest system works now. This was more video about refactoring in itself. Please tell me if you have any questions, but for now, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.